Hey guys, so I am an educator at Unacademy and you can follow me over there if you are interested to watch videos on basic concepts of chemistry or physical chemistry topics. You can also recommend this to your juniors and to your younger siblings, right? All you need to do is download the Unacademy learning app and watch my videos over there. Now let's just begin with our topic. Right, so oracle diagrams and questions related to oracle diagrams, they have troubled you a lot, right? But not anymore, not after this video. So now let's begin with the crash course for oracle diagrams and let me tell you one thing, I'll be really fast obviously because it's a crash course and there are tons of things that I want to actually tell you but because of time limitations and time barriers, I will just explain you the mnemonics which are important for oracle diagrams and how to solve questions related to you know oracle diagrams and the ground state term symbols, everything I'll try and cover in this particular video. So let's just begin. So first of all, this is the, uh, I think this, this is one familiar thing that you might have seen in oracle diagram now these are the two familiar diagrams that you come across in oracle diagram uh, but you don't need to memorize these diagrams i am going to help you out on how to do this it's a very very easy way right i have been using it for a very long time so first of all you need to know terms and octa and how do they split an octahedral or a tetrahedral field so the terms are spdf i hope you know how to find out the term in case you don't i'll explain in this video as well so we have spdf terms and we have the octahedral fields uh, in octahedral fields these terms split into these values like s term splits into a1g p term splits into t1g like this is the term uh, given in the octahedral field it does not split it remains only one term only the s term in octahedral field is called a1g uh, for for the p term it is called t1g for the d term it's called eg plus t2g so it's it gets split in split uh, it gets split into t2g and eg so we have eg plus t2g and then we have f term and the f term gets split into three terms okay which is a2g t1g t2g this is an octahedral field okay in tetrahedral field what will happen you just have to remove this g because in tetrahedral compounds we do not have center of symmetry so no need to write g you can just write a1 t1 eg e, uh, eg sorry not eg e1 t2 a2 t1 like that okay nothing else you have to write down okay now first of all how do we find out the term let's say we have been given a transition metal and the transition metal is let's say in d2 electronic configuration okay the, the electronic configuration is d2 so d2 means the first electron you have to follow hun's rule uh, and for and the second thing that is the most important is important is it is only applicable to high spin complexes always remember oracle diagrams are only applicable for high spin complexes never do them for low spins so we have let's say d2 configuration d2 electronic configuration so the first electron will go over here the second electron will go over here so i have shown you the d uh, d uh, i have shown you the uh, d orbitals so you can see plus 2 plus 1 0 minus 1 minus 2 and you have to find the l value so if you are putting two electrons so the first electron will go in plus 2 the second electron will go in plus 1 so the total becomes plus 3 for plus 3 the l value is equal to f so the term will be f and the f term in octahedral field gets split into these three terms okay similarly let's say we have d1 electronic configuration so in d1 electronic configuration the first one goes in plus 2 so if it goes in plus 2 we get l equal to 2 and the d term comes into the picture so one thing that is very very useful to you is that if you get the d term okay if you get the d term always now this is very very important and from this is where your whole uh, concept will start so the d term is responsible is is applicable to this diagram the one on the up upside and the f term is applicable to the diagrams on the lower side so for whichever uh, transition metals you get the f term you have to use this diagram and for whichever uh, transition metals you get um, d term you have to use this diagram so you'll only get d term or f term in the ground state okay so for uh, for um, d term you'll have to use the diagram on this side now for what all complexes we can get the d term okay before that this is the diagram like i told you is responsible for the d term now the you don't have to memorize any other thing you don't have to memorize any other thing the only thing that you need to memorize is let's say i'm putting the first electron in d1 okay I, I, let's imagine i'm taking a tetrahedral field and i'm putting the first electron in d1 so if i'm putting the first electron in d1 a tetrahedral field uh, just remember d1 tetrahedral means ground state is eg obviously in a tetra if you talk about a tetrahedral field the ground state is eg and the um, and the um, sorry the ground yeah the ground state is eg and the uh, excited state is 
टी टू जी इन केस ऑफ टेट्राहीडल कंपाउंड सो जस्ट रिमेंबर दैट फॉर टेट्राहीडल कंपाउंड द फर्स्ट ग्राउंड स्टेट इज ई जी एंड द एक्साइटेड स्टेट इज टी टू जी दिस इज जस्ट फॉर मेमोराइजिंग राइट सो द फर्स्ट इलेक्ट्रॉन यू पुट इन अ टेट्राहीडल फील्ड इट विल बी एसोसिएटेड विद ई जी टर्म नाउ यू हैव गॉट डी वन टेट्राहीड्रल नाउ आई टेल यू वन थिंग जस्ट एड फाइव टू इट सो डी वन एंड डी सिक्स टेट्राहीड्रल will be on the left side so d1 and d6 so you just have to remember d1 tetrahedral on the left side from this you can uh, you can imagine all the other values so d1 and d6 just add 5 to d1 so d1 and d6 tetrahedral will be on the left side and whatever the tetrahedral uh, whatever the electronic configuration is let's say d1 and d6 tetrahedral the octahedral composition will be on the opposite side so if d1 d6 tetrahedral is on this side let's say d1 and d6 tetrahedral is on this, this uh, on uh, is on this side then d d1 and d Six octahedral will be on the opposite side. Okay, so D one D one D six tetrahedral on the left side, D one D six octahedral on the other side. Now, what all? Uh, what are the uh, other electronic configurations for which we'll have D term? So one is D D six and D one. And what about D four and D nine? For D four and D nine also, we'll have the D term. How? Let's say I am talking about D four. So in D four, first electron goes over here, second over here, third over here, fourth over here. So plus two, plus one, zero, minus one. So the total becomes. Uh, this becomes three minus one two. Basically, the D four and D nine term will also fall into this category. Now the D four and D nine term. So just remember that we have taken D one D six tetrahedral. So the D four D nine term will come on the opposite side. So D four D nine tetrahedral will now come over here. Okay, D four D nine tetrahedral and similarly D four D nine. octahedral will come on this side this is the whole picture for the d terms so d from just from d1 tetrahedral you can derive which all uh, you know which all um, um, which all uh, electronic uh, co configurations will be either on the left side or on the right side so just remember d1 tetrahedral associated with the eg orbital from there you can derive everything just add 5 to it so d1 d6 tetrahedral will be on left side uh, and the d4 d9 tetrahedral will be on the opposite side so the tetrahedrals have to be on the opposite side so d1 d6 on left side So D4 D9 will be on the opposite side, opposite side, and D1 D6 tetrahedral and D1 D6 octahedral will all, all will uh, always be on the opposite side. So D1 D6 tetrahedral over here, D1 D6 octahedral on the right side. So for whichever terms, whichever electronic configurations you are getting the D term, you will use this diagram. And for the ones you, which you are getting the F term, you will have to use this diagram. Okay. So for F term also, you have to memorize in a similar way. It's a little difficult comparatively, but you have to memorize in a similar way. we have three terms so for the f we have three terms a to g t1 g and t2 g right we have three terms a to g t1 g and t2 g so um, uh, let's say in on one side we have a to g on the ground state then we have t2 g then we have t1 g okay this this thing you have to memorize and then there's there are two t1 gs if you see one t1 g uh, corresponds to the f term and one t1 g corresponds to the p term so you might be wondering where this tp term came so there See if I try and explain this whole video it might take me one and a half to two hours and I actually hate doing crash course because I can't explain most of the things but here you have to mug it up you have no other option that this t1g uh, corresponds to the f term and this t1g corresponds to the p term okay the the p symbol right okay so uh, let's say again so the d1 tetrahedral we had associated with eg and we had derived everything from there now here also we'll do something similar only we'll associate d2 tetrahedral with a to g ground state we'll associate d2 tetrahedral with a to g ground state now what did i tell you just add 5 to it so d2 and d7 tetrahedral will come on the will uh, will come uh, to 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 the left okay and if d2 uh, d2 and d7 come to the left then uh, d3 and d8 tetrahedral will come on the right d3 and d8 just add 5 will come on the right and the, their octahedrals will come on the opposite side so d d2 d7 tetrahedral is on the left so d2 d7 octahedral will be on the right and d3 d8 tetrahedral is on the right so d3 d8 octahedral will be on the left that's all you have to remember okay um, and you must be wondering how come d3 we are using this let's say d3 so d3 i told you plus 2 plus 1 0 so it it will have l equal to 3 which is f term and for f term you use this similarly if i talk about d2 d2 also plus 2 plus 1 so the total becomes plus 3 l equal to plus 3 which is f term so for d2 for d7 for d3 for d8 all these terms if you if you calculate the term symbol it will come out to be f now one thing which is very very important is that all, the, all these d terms 
for which you get uh, the D term for all the electronic configurations for which you get the D term there will be only one DD transition and for the ones before which you get um, F there will be three DD transitions okay and what kind of three DD, uh, DD transitions can be there see in case of D the only transition can be from EG to T2G or T2G to EG depending on the electronic configuration but in case of uh, in case of uh, this in case of these terms d3 d8 d2 and d7 tetrahedral and octahedral there can be three transitions like a to g to t to g a to g to t1 g of the f term and a to g to t1 g of the p term similarly over here t1 g f to t2 g t1 g f to t1 g p and t1 g f to a to g so these are the possible transitions in both the cases okay so i hope you understood the transitions and everything else now what about d5 system so you might be confused that what happens in case of a d5 system so in case of a d5 system um what happens is that see d5 system first of all let's find out the term for the d5 system so this question actually came in the cs and net exam last to last year for four marks and they had asked you the ground states ground state symbol for uh, d5 system they had given some manganese complex and they had asked the ground state term symbol so a spectroscopic ground state the ground state term symbol so five electrons so one electron two three four five so all the five electrons will be filled so l value will be equal to zero that is the s term now for s term i told you in octahedral field it does not split but the term related to that is a1g right the term related to that is a1g so the ground state term symbol will be a1g but you have to add one more thing you have to add the multiplicity also that is 2s plus 1 where s is the number of unpaired electrons so in case of a d5 system there will be 5 unpaired electrons in case of a d5 high spin complex there will be 5 unpaired electrons so s i can put to be uh, 5 into half 5 into half spin is half right so 2 into 5 by 2 plus 1 2 into 5 by 2 plus 1 this will give me 6 so the answer was 6 a1g as simple as that this question came for four marks pretty simple right okay um where's the where's the duster duster is over here now the next thing that we we got another question let me come over here uh, the question is spectros spectroscopic ground state symbol and number of transitions for this complex titanium h2o whole 6 2 positive again for four marks very simple first of all find out the electronic configuration of titanium titanium over here scandium titanium so it's d2 system d2 system okay d2 system obviously octahedral d2 octahedral so if i talk about d2 octahedral uh, if i put plus 2 plus 1 3 l equal to 3 f term f term excuse me f term means we have to use this particular diagram over here and for d2 octahedral system the ground state is t1g because for d2 tetrahedral we have a to g but for octahedral systems we will take take the opposite one so the ground state term symbol will be t1g so we have t1g and it's also asking the number of transitions so i told you for f term the number of transitions will always be three so the answer is number of transitions is three and the ground state symbol will be t1g but we have to write the multiplicity as well so since we have two unpaired electrons in titanium so the multiplicity will be three okay 3 t1 g so this was the correct answer again for four marks hardly took you two minutes if you have memorized the diagram really well okay and with the help of my mnemonics maybe those work for me maybe they'll work for you or maybe you have your own mnemonics whatever it is just uh, you know memorize this diagram whatever way you it suits you okay uh, the next question is ground state term for T2G6 EG2 in octahedral system. So T2G6 EG2. So it's basically a D8 system. Again, we'll do the simple thing. A D8 system means uh, we'll put the electrons and see what term we get. Okay, in D8 system, sorry, my okay, this thing got twisted anyway. So D8 system means um, one electron, two electron, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are two unpaired electrons and you can see L value will be equal to three. You don't have to see the negative or positive sign. You just have to see, you'll get minus three basically. You'll get minus three. So L minus three, you take the modulus L equal to three and that is the F term. So for here also, here also we're getting the F term and in the F term, uh, the number of transitions will be three. And, uh, but they have asked the ground state symbol for D8 system. So D8 system, um, in D8 system, what will you get the ground state? So see, 
d2 d7 and d8 will lie over here d3 d8 octahedral will lie on this side on the left side because d uh, d2 d7 octahedral will lie on the uh, d2 d7 octahedral will lie on the right side so d3 d8 octahedral will lie on left side which is a to g system so the correct answer is a to g and first and we have to find the number of unpaired electrons there are two unpaired electrons so the correct answer is 3 a to g it's super simple it's a very easy um question if it comes from the oracle diagrams and i hope that now you will be able to solve these questions because i remember like every time after the exam many students used to come to me and tell me how to solve this question and i actually was baffled because these these are such easy questions but yes the books you won't find a clarity in this concept they haven't given it in a very clear fashion but it's actually very easy sometimes they can also ask you in a let's say in a d2 tetrahedral system uh, which is the transition corresponding to the uh, lowest energy or the highest wavelength so the correspond so that will be a to g to t to g this will require the lowest energy or highest wavelength so they can twist the question like this as well so I, I really hope that now you will be able to solve such questions do give me your feedback if you like this video and um, just share it with your friends and thank you so much for watching